Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. How to guide how to install a gaming graphics card into our Acer Aspire T $400 desktop computer. I've previously reviewed this computer in the video description below. You'll find a link to that and the full playlist of videos on this computer. First boot, Windows setup, Windows performance video, how to upgrade the RAM, how to install an SSD, some game performance videos. This is a great value for the money for $400. Now, the computer as it comes out of the box is a very good machine, but it's not really a gaming computer. It will play light, casual games out of the box. League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Minecraft, Dota 2, Rocket League. It will play games such as that out of the box, but it will not play Battlefield 1, Grand Theft Auto 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, etc. Now, what we need to add is a gaming graphics card, and this is an example of a good card that you can add to this machine. This is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti graphics card. What makes this card special? First of all, it's relatively short, easy to install on most machines, and it does not require a six pin PCI Express power connector, which this power supply does not provide. Now, certainly you can use a more powerful card and adapters or replace the power supply, but if you're gonna do all that, I would suggest buying a computer that already has a video card in it. The whole point of this is to be an inexpensive option that you can put an inexpensive card. You can find 1050s and 1050 Ti cards in the $110 to $130 range for reasonable prices. Now this is one of the better cards. This is an EVGA Ti super clocked card that I've previously done an unboxing and review of. This is sort of top of the line when it comes to the 1050 Ti cards. I'm gonna show you how to install it today. The first thing we're going to need is a screwdriver and I have got a standard screwdriver right here. Any old standard Phillips head screwdriver will do. There are two screws on the side of the case, one here and one here. They are black. I have the computer on the side. The side of the computer with the big grill is the one you want to place it on. The other side is completely flat, solid metal, so don't put it on that one, put it on this side. We will simply remove our two screws right here, setting those aside. Once these two screws are disconnected, there is a handle right here. Simply put your fingers under the lip and slide it towards the back of the machine that far. If you look over here, you will see there is metal exposed. This is as far as it will slide, and then it simply lifts straight off. We are now looking at the inside of this computer. Briefly, this is your power supply, 300 watt power supply up here. It's a good power supply for this unit. We have got our two terabyte hard drive right here. Our DVD reader and writer is behind this panel here. This is the CPU cooling fan. The actual processor is underneath this fan. We have eight gigabytes of system RAM that came with the computer and an additional eight gigabytes. I have previously shown how to install that in another video. This is the slot we will be installing our graphics card in. This is our AC Wi-Fi adapter. If you are using this with its uh, wireless access or the Bluetooth 4.0, this chip is what provides it. And here are the antenna wires, which run around the case and provide you with reception. Overall, a very nice machine for $400. Now, we want to install the graphics card into this slot. There are four bay covers on the back of this machine, and I'll turn it in a second so you can see it. The first thing we want to do, however, is move this. This is a toolless panel that simply comes off just like that. Let me show you one more time. It snaps into place, and then it just comes back just like so. All I'm doing is lifting up a bit and releasing the notch, these two bumps, from this space right here. It really is that simple, and then it just sets like that. Now, if you look, there will be, and I'll tilt it up so you can see it, there's a space you can actually reach through here, and that is where the back of the graphics card is actually gonna go through, and then there are covers on this back panel. You are going to have to remove two of these covers because they are in place. Now, I will go ahead and move the computer like this. Let me adjust it, there we go, so you can see. These four panels, provide access to the ports on the back of the motherboard, the slots on the back of the motherboard. These have to be removed. There are a couple of ways to do so. 
First of all, if you look at these cross-shaped patterns, you will notice that they perfectly fit a Phillips head screwdriver. One of the options to remove them is to place a screwdriver in here and push down and twist in order to pull them out, and that works just fine. Now, in this particular computer, the two that we need to remove are actually the center two, not this one. This slot right here is for the 1X PCI Express expansion slot, the white slot right there. So what we're going to do is I will remove the first one using the screwdriver, tilting it back and forth using the screwdriver for leverage until it breaks free. I'm putting my hand behind it to catch it so it doesn't fall into the computer, like that. And then we'll just take our screwdriver and put it in the second one, rocking it back and forth. I'm not using any force here. These panels are held on just by two small, they're actually completely detached except for two small metal nubs holding it on. So all I'm doing is working it back and forth gently to take these off. Once these are off, simply discard or recycle them. You'll never put them on again. At this point, we're going to put the computer back on its side. And here we are with the computer back on the side. As I move this over, you will now see that the two covers are removed here. The reason why we do that is because this is a dual slot graphics card. This tab right here is what is going to go through here and rest on this platform that this will hold into place. It's very nice because it's toolless. There's no screws, there's nothing else you need. You just need the card and a Phillips head screwdriver to take those two panels off and you're ready to go. Now when you install this, there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. First of all, there are your Wi-Fi antenna wires right here. If you are not careful, you will actually pull these out of your Wi-Fi adapter right here and you could possibly break them, making your Wi-Fi inoperative. You don't want to do that and so what you want to do is you want to push these down and make sure that they are completely out of the way so that the graphics card doesn't hit them and you don't damage them. The next thing is you've got several cables here. This one is the front audio cable. This runs to the headphone jack and the microphone jack in the front of the computer. And you simply want to make sure that you aren't pushing down on it with the video card. You want to make sure that it's out of the way. Everything else should be fine. And at this point, I'm going to take the card. The slot here lines up with the gray slot right there. Now, you can't line it up evenly because you'll hit the side of the case. And so you have to come back towards the front a bit. As you bring the card down, once this clears the edge of the case, then you bring the card towards the back and line it up with the slot. This is the DVID port. Please note that this is actually gonna go through the slot. And so when you're lining it up, make sure that the port here actually extends out through the back of the case. So we bring it down. and you may have to push that out of the way just a bit. As I come down, you notice that this is a two slot card. It's, it takes up two of these bays. Take a look at where the front audio connector is. This is actually running into this card. And so here's what we're going to do. Let me tilt this up so you can see it. In the bottom of the case, this is held on by a plastic clip here, which is keeping it elevated. I am actually going to take it out of the plastic clip by simply pulling it out. And the reason is, is I'm simply going to push it down towards the bottom of the case. This will help get it out of our, get, get it out of the way so that it's easier to install. And there we go. Now with that taken out of the clip and pushed down, we can bring the video card in. And there we go, that works much better. And that slides perfectly into place. It doesn't take a lot of force, just a little bit. This white tab in the back is actually the release tab for the card. When you push the card in, that will pop up. To remove the card, you simply push it down and it pops the card out of the slot. If this tab is up when you're inserting the card, you just want to make sure that it's pushed down to make it easier to install the card. And then when the card's properly installed, it will pop itself up automatically, just like the memory slots. So again, this is down. I'll bring the card in, bring it forward, make sure the port is aligned with the back of the machine, and simply press vertically straight down. There we go. The tab popped up, and the card's firmly in place. 
Please note that because we are not using any screws here, because we are using the tool of system, the back end of it may not sit securely. I'm going to tilt this up a bit so you can see. There is a notch here on the graphics card and a hole right there. If I push forward that direction towards the back of the case, I shouldn't say forward, I should say back, I can get those screw holes to line up. Now if you have a screw that fits that, you can certainly screw it in place. However, holding the graphics card in place and then rotating this around, it's not going anywhere. That locks it in place. That will hold it in place without needing a screw, without having to do anything else. At this point, the graphics card is installed. Our tab is up. We have the screw holes lined up in the back for the graphics card. We are going to take our cover, which also holds this in place, and place it back on top of the case, just like so, with this metal strip exposed. At that point, we simply slide the cover closed, take our screws, and we simply screw this into place, like so. Now that the card is installed, let me turn it on its front so you can see it in place. We have the graphics card installed in the middle two slots, as I said before, because we removed those two covers. This video card has three video out ports. We have our DVI-D, Di Digital Video Interface Digital. We have our HDMI 2.0 port and our, our Display Port 1.4. This is just a ventilation port to allow some airflow. These are the original HDMI ports used by the onboard graphics chip. With this graphics card installed, these are disabled. You no longer will plug your monitor into either of these. You will now plug your monitors into this, these ports. This video card easily supports three different monitors, so if you want to run multiple monitors, you can certainly do so. For example, two monitors, one for gaming and one for watching videos, watching chat, streaming, or doing something else, you can use multiple monitors for that. Otherwise, everything else you use as normal. That has been the demonstration on how to install a graphics card. So that is how you install the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti graphics card into this computer. Now I've got it booted up. We're sitting at Windows. However, the graphics drivers are not yet installed, so I want to show that really quickly. We're going to open our favorite web browser and we're going to type in NVIDIA drivers. There we go. And we'll click on the very first link, which will be NVIDIA's driver page. The 10 series is automatically selected, but you need to choose 1050 Ti and make sure that you've chosen Windows 10 64-bit. Why? Because you're running the 64-bit version of Windows 10. Click search. It'll find it there. Click download. And the drivers will start downloading. Well, you have to click agree and download. Everything has an agree and download page. We'll hit save. This doesn't take very long to download. Well, it does depending on your internet connection. It takes longer to install than it does to download. This is something you only have to do manually once. There are several programs that will be installed by the NVIDIA graphics drivers. Almost done, running security scan. The first thing is GeForce Experience. Yes, we want to run this, close that, accept all the defaults here. This is just extracting the, uh, the, the download archive so that it can install it. GeForce Experience is a program that will run in your task tray. It does several things. First of all, GeForce Experience will automatically optimize your games for the best graphic detail settings for your graphics card if you want it to. That's an optional feature. It will also download and notify you of new versions of the NVIDIA driver, and then it's just a one-click install. Um, a window will pop up right down here saying, um, notification, there is a new version of the GeForce Experience driver. Do you wish to install it? Click it, express install, you're done. It also has NVIDIA Shadowplay. Now, you can use this to stream or record your gameplay for later upload to, for example, YouTube. If you want to, it's free, very low performance penalty. It's very nice. There's some other features in there. That, that's part of what's included in this. Another thing that's included is the NVIDIA PhysX software, the physics simulation software, which is used by some games. Finally, the graphics driver and the graphics driver display panel themselves. I'll show you here in a second when we click uh, uh, the details. Normally, you would just click uh, all the express settings and just let it install. This is part of what gives you all the features of your graphics card. We'll hit agree and continue. You should hit express, but just to show you what it's installing, I'm going to hit custom. We have 
the graphics driver, the 3D Vision controller driver, the 3D Vision driver. Now this card can do 3D gaming if you have 3D glasses, which you probably don't with a computer at this level, but you could. The HD audio driver. Now this is important because it will output audio from your computer to speakers on your monitor or TV through the HDMI audio port. There's GeForce Experience. As you can see, none of this is installed. The Physics System software, and we'll hit Next. Now this process will take anywhere between five to 10 minutes to install, depending upon whether you're on a hard drive or a solid state drive. So I'll trim this out a bit and we'll be back when it's finished. And we are now finished installing. So that took not very long. So we hit close. And the first thing it's gonna do is launch NVIDIA's GeForce Experience. Now NVIDIA does want you to sign into this because everything wants to sign in these days. You have various ways to sign in, log in with an NVIDIA login, Google or Facebook. I'll log in and we'll be back in a second. And we're back. This is the screen that shows up after you log in. You have the option to automatically optimize your games. I personally uncheck that because I like to adjust game settings myself. Some people like this to work. Some people prefer to do it themselves. The choice is yours. This just lets you know what NVIDIA uh, Shadow Play is. It lets you uh, record videos, take screenshots, broadcast to Twitch and YouTube, stream your games to NVIDIA Shield, and of course there's no games found because this is a brand new machine, so there's nothing on it. The driver tab up here will let you know when there's new drivers available. And that is NVIDIA Shadow Play. Your drivers are now up to date, you're done. So we are finished with installing our GeForce GTX 1050 Ti graphics card. Like this video if you like it, don't if you don't remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button right below this video. Questions and comments go in the comments box below this video and as always check out my video description, links to this computer, the full playlist of videos on this computer, links to buy 1050 and 1050 Ti graphics cards will also be down there as well. So if you like this and you found it useful that's where the good stuff is thank you very much for watching i will see you next time